Hello everyone and welcome. I have seven tips for you to be successful in Frostpunk 2. The first one is related to shelter. When you begin, you have uh, citizens that need to stay warm and you can keep them warm by building house housing districts and these districts must be built close to the generator so they get uh, plus 20 heat more heat it means they will be warmer it, they will be happier and you will consume less fuel when the bad things come out when the bad weather comes and with one district you get 20 shelter so you need three housing districts four three and you expand one and you expand one and you should be able to cover all the shelter that you you have over here you can expand another one but you shouldn't expand um, too much in the beginning just expand one and build a research and research center otherwise you won't be able to build buildings without expanding the districts the house districts and the other districts the other districts have one slot integrated but uh, uh, you can expand them and gain two slots for buildings which is great so this was it shelter to keep them warm and fuel make no mistake when you begin go straight for the fuel don't waste time I mean you can simultaneously go in several directions but don't waste time when it comes about fuel so just make sure to get it okay build an extraction extractions bam and you will have enough fuel in no time so once you have that the housing and the fuel you're all set you are all set now you produce enough uh, fuel you're all set and when it comes about fuel you should also go for research and prioritize researches for heating in the beginning mainly the generator which will allow you to uh, run uh, to generate heat through oil and steam which are two additional uh, sources of uh, heat which your initial generator is not able to uh, use so you need this uh, generator upgrade but as long as you have coal you can go first for a coal mine and exploit more coal because as you will get more citizens more coal will be required to be extracted uh, from the from the mine and additionally you can make this little upgrade for um, reducing the heat demand to your housing districts it's a passive um, research basically you research it and it's pa passive but uh, the coal mines is a building so which you have to build so that's how you you begin guys shelter and fuel very important very important we're moving on to the second uh, tip that i have for you the logistic district this district is very important uh, because it can get you a variety of resources so if you build a extraction district you either get coal you get uh, oil or you get steam but if you build a um, logistics district i mean if you build all of them on this map i have two two available only two slots for logistics centers 
if you build both of them and you make the necessary upgrades but if even the initial uh, even building them you get uh, 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 Frostlanders Frostlands thing and then you make the the upgrade for where is it scouts headquarter is it no 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 sorry where is it logistic base okay if you get the uh, vanguard logistic bay building researched you can do it in the very first weeks of uh, of the game you will be able to get even more uh, even more frostlanders and you get to explore the map and on the map there are plenty of resources if you lack uh, materials you can connect some trails and get materials and uh, satisfy uh, satisfy your need if you don't have enough fuel uh, there are plenty of lands with fuel as you can see there are plenty of them which I haven't used yet and look at my main uh, my main city plus 105 plus 346 plus 815 plus 131 it's going great and this is the tactic I follow I always kept my Frostlanders in action so build them as soon as possible and explore the map you will get plenty of resources to satisfy your needs and um, have a surplus a little surplus and prepare for the whiteout or whatever is coming now the second thing I want the third thing I want to talk with you about is the research and law uh, thingy always research and always pass laws and make sure you have the basic laws for uh, for each uh, section except for the rule here it's a bit more complex uh, here so in the beginning when you start you uh, have to have some laws and these are let's say the pillars of your society for example to when it comes about resources for food additives you can go for either food additives with chemical additive chemical additives or foraged additives each one has advantages and disadvantages and this one forage additives only has advantages it provides some food to your citizens this one increases the production efficiency but it's creating diseases in your hometown and it goes on and on and on now the one law that you will play with a lot is the outsiders sorry is the outsiders one when you have too many people make sure to either admit no outsiders vote this law or uh, allow productive outsiders only which will make sure you don't get too many people when you need a lot of workforce make sure to pass this law and you will get a lot of people or you can find them on on the map uh, with the previous tip but that's it with the law and research and the research always keep researching and a great tip to to, to do research is to actually uh, research when um, when you have researched your necessities and uh, you want to research more to progress the game but the research is not urgent make sure to make promises to factions to this one does one to for research and basically you will do research and you will also improve uh, you will also improve your uh, relationship and your trust with uh, with that faction 
forward. There you go. Um, and keep doing that. Keep doing that. The next thing, the next uh, thing I want to talk about is the politics system in this game. And basically, you need to keep them happy. If you keep them happy, you will have no trouble through the game. You'll have trust. Uh, tension will be absent, and so on. This is the trust bar. This is the tension, the tension uh, bar, the tension mirror. And these are the factions available in my uh, settlement. To keep them happy, you either make them promises to pass laws and or to uh, do research, and you do the research, or you grant them an agenda, and they will put uh, the laws on the uh, next uh, council session, or you found them with a project. You f fund them projects, basically you bribe them, and somehow from now and then it will upset the other parties with the fund project. Uh, mainly go for make promises and grant agenda. These are clean ways of doing that. Of course, if you grant them an agenda, there will be some uh, weird laws that they will pass, they will want to pass, and it will affect a little bit your colony, but overall, it's for your own good. It's just they have different views of how a colony should be ruled. Um, the next thing is to where is it? Here. Is to promote them. And if you promote them, basically more people will uh, will join their party and you will improve your relationship with them. If you condemn them, you will start having trouble with them. You don't want that. Um, and they also have special abilities that can help you. For example, uh, the overseers have the uh, overdrive output ability and if you press this uh, production efficiency will uh, will increase I'll try to press it well the frost is okay and so it goes uh, these guys have something different. The Americans. Uh, anyway, from now and then, when uh, there are tensions between the factions, different factions can decrease the tension, the fever with uh, the other factions, and so on. Um, and here you pass the laws. You can vote. And when there are many hesitants, you can vote without negotiation because uh, they. They will vote for you. Not all of them, but some of them will vote for you. Uh, in this case, there are uh, 22 hesitants. I don't expect them to vote uh, for me. If there were like 50 hesitants, then I would have uh, been more confident. So you negotiate. You select the faction you want to negotiate with. You negotiate with them to vote for the uh, law or not to, but I, I choose to vote for it. And then I promise them to fund their project it's clean it's bribe it is as it is the end it should work the just great okay and I found the project machinist there you go trust increases my relationship with them increases this is what you have to do. You have to keep them happy, the always keep it balanced. Moving on. The next tip that I have to, for you is uh, to keep the necessary commodities uh, in your uh, towns, in your colonies. To keep them always uh, on surplus. Always produce more than you consume in order to keep your people happy. And to do that, you either produce them or you create colonies you create different colonies that will provide you with uh, extra resources because you won't be able to produce everything 
at your main city and you um, you get it from your colonies and also you get them from this type of uh, this type of um, nodes on the map which will uh, increase your production of oil of coal of food whatever you want you get them from the map it's a limited source but it works and to improve the speed to improve the speed at which everything gets delivered you have two types of roads the trail and the skyway construction the skyway will allow you to transport more resources from your colonies the basic resource transfer is uh, 250 but if you build a skyway it it goes up to uh, 600 and then if you build an additional building to your to your an additional building which you have to research the attend the freight dock if you research this and build it on your uh, logistics uh, district you will be able to transfer 300 extra more resources and here you can send the extra oil to your main city you can send from your main city food to the fuel colony or other colonies and uh, goods and so on wait there you go and you can do that for the other colonies and so forth you can expand your production of resources you can build a few extra more and you can transfer even more one thousand two hundred that's great let's send more goods it's perfect guys it's perfect okay provide the necess necessary goods food and materials to your new model is safer than a repurposed one okay my final tip for you is to prepare for the whiteout how do you do that it's simple you need to store resources i have a lot of um, storage for um, coal and oil which is basically fuel so for fuel i have a lot of um, of stockpile and the stockpile increases and the whiteout is close during the whiteout you don't get any resources so as soon as you see the whiteout coming you start preparing for what's coming so you start building roads okay I have I explored a lot of the map there you go evil coal but I don't I, oil is sacred stockpile limit increases I could use this as well let's go this way I can't There you go. Stockpile limit increases. Let's do it again. And I have more oil over here. Now, this is a little bit. Oh, I'm just taking it. This is a little bit. Uh, 
Uh, close. It's a close call. I should have prepared a little bit uh, sooner. The whiteout is coming. I have my stockpile. As soon as they finish working on those trails, my fuel production will increase, as you can see. And I'm storing it. And the final tip with uh, with this, with the whiteout. Is after the storm comes. Oh, game save. After the storm comes, you need to do a very important thing. A very, very important thing. Of course, you don't have to necessarily do this uh, only when the storm comes. Are invited for a Prior to the storm, of luxurious revelry. Prior to the storm, you can uh, play with it. It's to turn on the overdrive, and basically, it will consume less resources. And it looks like I am on a surplus so far. This is it. As soon as the weather improves, you turn off the overdrive and you're all set. Enjoy it, guys. And don't forget to, uh, if you wish to purchase Fro Frostpunk 2, there is a link in the description to my sponsor.